hello and welcome to another episode of today's conversations on leadership powered by life university i'm your host dr Gilles lamarche and i'm thrilled today to have a young life university alumnus with us dr sam wagner dr wagner graduated from life university with both his doctor of chiropractic and a master's in sports in 2021 in a short conversation prior to this recording he told me that he was an associate for two years and actually started his own practice in July of 2023. We are recording this at the end of February 2024. So he's been in his own practice for less than a year. And he was saying he already has a waiting list practice and he's already hired an associate. And some of you may know him because he is the chiropractor for the well loved quarterback <laughs> for the Green Bay Packers, Jordan Love. Dr. Wagner, I, I remember you as a student, but it's so much fun to have you on with me today. Thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Um, when I received the email from you guys about doing this, I immediately wanted to jump on it because I know you and I had spoken quite a bit when I was a student, but now to be on this side of it, um, it's really, really fun to be able to, to have the opportunity to do this. So thank you for having me. So you obviously, you obviously took this role of being a chiropractor and being willing to lead your community's healthcare uh, really, really seriously. So can you share with the audience... How did you start that? Like, what was the impetus? What was the vision that you have? What was the plan? What was the model? What did Dr. Sam do to reach this pinnacle that you've already reached less than three years after graduation? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so one of the biggest things that I did was looked at what was something that was unique and different um, in the area that I wanted to practice. And through my doctorate education, through the master's education, I was really able to kind of cultivate and layer the type of visit that I wanted to have with the patient. So in my practice, I do adjust, um, but I also do a lot of corrective exercise, a lot of soft tissue work, dry needling, just a bunch of different things, all to make sure that I could really address every type of issue for these patients going forward. And what set me apart is I think in that my visits typically are not 10 or 15 minutes. They're usually 45 minutes an hour. And it's just me and one-on-one -on -one patient care just to really get to the root cause of some of these issues that some of these patients in the area were experiencing. Uh, my population I see tends to be more of an athletic population or people that are just more active and moving their bodies. And there is no one in the area that practices in this style of practice uh, from a chiropractic standpoint. So I really, really wanted to lean into that and just kind of show the value and explain why I'm different. Excellent. Um, you said earlier you started as an associate in Wisconsin, in the same town where you're at currently? Um, no, it's about 35 minutes from here. Okay. So you went from being an associate for two years, and then you decide, okay, July of 2023, I'm going to open up my own practice 30 minutes away from where I've been seeing people already for two years. How did you start that practice? What was it that made it special so that you're already at that point that your practice is growing where you're requiring an associate. Yeah, absolutely. So I was, like I said, an associate for those two years and I had a great experience, learned a ton. And then I always knew I had some opportunities to work with some professional athletes, but then also to kind of see patients in the setting that I was always really, really passionate about. So as I had transitioned out of my associateship, I just went to think about, okay, what is the ideal patient? What is, what is, my perfect patient that I would love to see and take care of. And where do they hang out? What kind of gyms do they go to? What sort of restaurants or, you know, places do they really, really frequent? And I just went there and asked to meet with the managers or the business owners or the lead trainers and just got to know them and explain, Hey, I'm, I'm a soft tissue rehab based chiropractor. In the area, I just opened a practice and I have quite a few patients that constantly ask, okay, where are the places that they need to go? Where should they spend their time? And I want to know, how can I help your business grow? How can I send them to you? What sort of information do you have? I never came from a place of, hey, send me your people. I want to work on them. It was always more of a, that servant leadership style of, I want to know how I can help you. And then in turn, that's when these funnels started to get created. and. It pretty soon, like I kind of shared with you earlier, my schedule was pretty maxed. 
you know, two and a half, three days a week, I was working on my pro guys. And then the other two and a half days a week, I'd work on patients here. And then the schedules kept growing, kept growing, kept growing to the point where I had a two week wait list and it's been, been pretty steady up even until now, but even with football season ending. So I, that was really, really the biggest thing for me was trying to build a tribe, so to speak. That was a big thing that I remember we always talked about at life or build your community, build your family around you of how do you want to be a pillar in the community? What do you want to be known for? And for me, it was being able to constantly cultivate relationships and grow something and be honest and know that every single relationship is reciprocated. It's not just a me, me, me. It's how can I help you? You know, it's beautiful to listen to you because I graduated from chiropractic school 45 years ago and I built my practice exactly the way you just described how you built your practice. It worked 45 years ago and you're telling me it still works today because often I've asked the question, I don't know if you were ever in in a room where I asked that question of students, you know, what kind of business are you going to be in when you graduate? And most of them have a tendency to say, well, I'm going to be in the healthcare business. I said, well, sort of, but you're really in the people business. We're right. about taking care of people. And if you want to become a leader in your community, you've got to get involved in your community. You can't expect to hang a shingle or buy an ad in the local newspaper or buy an ad in the radio and think that you're going to build this wonderful practice in less than 12 months, which you have done in just a few months. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so proud. Like I, I, I love talking to Obviously, chiropractors, I like talking to leaders in every aspect of leadership across all businesses. But every one of them, really, the top leaders that I speak with, always say, I take care of my people. I take care of my community. I show up ready to serve. And when I serve, the universe serves me in return. So that's pretty much what you answered. Yeah, absolutely. Um so it's a good way to get started. And I'm assuming you're going to continue that, obviously. And, you know, for those of you who don't watch football, you may not have seen Dr. Sam on the sidelines. But, you know, I mean, he he got some prominence this year when the Green Bay Packers made it a long, long way. And obviously when Jordan Love was playing so well and you're his, his personal chiropractor. But as you build your organization, like, you know, you have a vision for what you're you're where you had the vision to be. I assume your vision is even beyond where you're at right now. Uh, How do you cultivate creative thinking for yourself? And how do you encourage creative thinking of the people that actually work with you? People that serve with you. Absolutely. Great question. So I think with that, I constantly try to think um, about how is this going to serve long term? You know, like, one of my mentors always used to say, don't stop looking at the trees, think about the forest, you know, and what is this going to look like long term? And if there's ways that you need to lean in and create some foundation so that things can continue to flourish, that's really, really important. So constantly trying to be more forward thinking and then reverse engineering stuff. So um, not only how can we do this more efficiently, but how can we do this more effectively? Um, you know, I think initially I was just, it was just me. I was a one man band, did every single thing. And then slowly the demand was, okay, I need to get an admin. I need to have someone that's going to help me with my social media. I need to have someone that's going to help me that I trust with patient care. And it's just slowly, slowly grown and constantly thinking in that process as not only just a clinician, but now a leader of people, how can I meet them where they're at? How can we look at this in a different way, a different lens to get a better understanding? Um, And I think really, really importantly, it's just shut my mouth and listen. Um, Mm. Like Mm. really, really, really hear people out, really get an understanding because, yes, this has been amazing, right? Doc, like these first seven months have been great, but I'm not reinventing the wheel by anything by any means, I'm trying to continually ask questions from other people who have done this before me, or that have had success similar to yourself. And what did you do? You know, like you said, 45 years ago, that's exactly what you did. It's exactly what I did. I met, I mean, I I initially started practice in a town of 5,000 people. And I committed to handing out 5,000 business cards my first year in practice. 
which means I had to meet a lot of people. Now, there was a lot of small communities around my small community as well. So I attracted from probably 60 miles one way, 100 miles probably one way, and 100 miles plus the other way. Um, but I literally did hand out those 5,000 business cards my first year in practice. Everybody told me that was impossible. But yeah. I met people. And as you said, I met them where they were. I, I asked them how I could serve them. And in return, I told them what I could do for them if they asked me. If they didn't ask me, I'd just say, I'm a new chiropractor in town. This is where my office is. If I can ever serve you, members of your family, members of your staff, please give me a call. And all of a sudden, I get a call from the president of one of the big lumber companies who has a staff of over 500 people. Guess what happened there, right? We built yeah. that. We built relationships. Um, right. And, and 100%. And I think a big part of that, too, for me, um, trying to be creative was I felt my creativity and all my juices were the strength for me is creating relationships and communicating and meeting people. Like that's not been an issue for me. So I always thought, well, if there's no one in the door right now, when, that third week of July when I got started, if there's no one here, what? how can I really maximize my time? So when my schedule wasn't full, I was in a gym or I was going to a different supplement or vitamin shop or going to more meet with a more boutique personal trainer or going to an Orange Theory Fitness and just maximizing that time. Like, yes, that's my work time. That's my patient time. But if I didn't have patients, I needed to go to create relationships to eventually have them. And that was a really, really big thing that helped. When you weren't working in your practice, you're working on your practice. 100%. Yeah. Right. Because if you're going to be, if you're going to lead your community, you must be visible to your community so you can impact their health, the health of their family, and therefore their entire life. Absolutely. Beautiful Absolutely. And I, yeah. It, I mean, it's been, it's gone better than I could have ever even imagined. And I just want to continue to lean in and, and, and keep rolling. So let's let's ask a second question. Um, what is one characteristic that you believe every leader should have that you have? And if it wasn't innate for you, how did you develop it? I know it's a multifaceted question, but really yeah. a characteristic that you believe is essential in the leader that you possess. And how did you acquire that quality or that characteristic? Um, I think listening. Uh, checking your ego and knowing that you don't know everything. And like I said, I definitely don't know everything. And I think listening and hearing people out, not only from a, you know, community standpoint, but also even like a patient centered standpoint, I was listening to this, this Ted talk um, that was talking about client patient interactions and how the average clinician will interrupt a patient speaking within seven to 10 seconds which is mind boggling to me of so many people just want to be heard. They want, they want someone that cares and genuinely listens. Um, and I think that's been a really, really big thing that I'd really try to focus on with everyone. Um, not only just patient relationship, but just community in general, or even my own personal relationships with friends and family and really offering some sort of uh, connection through that. And I think as a leader, it's really, really important because you know, you'll never walk a day in the shoes of someone else, but by sitting and listening and genuinely caring about what they have to say goes a really, really long way with developing trust and knowing that you can start to build that team around you. Um, I think for me, like I was an athlete myself as well um, throughout school, going to college, playing football, pursuing some stuff professionally through football. And then that led me to end up playing rugby as well at life. Um, and I think the team and the camaraderie aspect of really just listening and hearing people out is, is really, really important. And I think that's been one huge reason why it's really allowed me to accelerate my growth as much as I have is because I do genuinely care and I want people to feel like they're heard when they can come to me. I'll tell you, that is such wise advice from a very young leader, but <laughs> respectfully, extremely wise advice. I mean, I listen to, you know, top level people I've seen as top level leaders all the time. And that is a common theme. Uh, I listened to Ed Bastian a number of months ago, but Ed is the president and CEO of Delta Airlines. You know, they have 45,000 employees. And when he was asked the question on what's his leadership style, he says, I always start by listening. 
profound, right? So they listen across the organization. So beautiful. Maybe as a last question for today's short podcast, uh, Dr. Wagner, what advice would you give someone? Because you're new in leadership yourself, but still, what would advice, what's the advice you'd give someone that is stepping into this leadership role as a first timer, like you did just months ago? Yeah, I would say um, to understand and know that it's okay if someone tells you no. Because you could have 10 no's, but if there's one person that tells you yes, that's all you need. Um, and I think that's been one thing for me of that initial barrier, because I know that even some of my like, colleagues and um, – well, I guess that, that would be two parts <laughs> to my answer, but um, ha- there's people that have struggle with just getting out and ar- articulating yourself or communicating th- what your message is, what your mission is. And I, I don't care. It doesn't affect me when someone says no, because I know that there are other people that need my help or, or, or value this style of care. Um, and if you don't ever put yourself in the situation for t- someone, to tell you no, then you'll never be put in a situation for somebody to tell you yes. Um, Mm. I think the other big part of it too is really making sure that you, with more like-minded individuals or um, people that are really striving towards similar things, I am on weekly calls with actually a few other life alums um, that we constantly kind of iron sharpens iron of, Hey, this is what I'm seeing in my practice. This is what uh, I, I need help with or, or need some, some support with. And then we kind of do that for each other in similar roles, similar practice styles, but also different patient demographics, um, different locations. And it's still, it's, it's a, there's a lot of similarities and parallels with it. And so I think that really helps because I, I, I found that, you know, especially in the heart of football season, right? I was just really grind, 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 kind of had some blinders on a little bit and just, hey, take a step back, look at it from this lens or see it from this perspective or change your wording a little bit here. Um, get rid of this softener, whatever it is, um, has been extremely, extremely helpful. And I would not be where I am today without that. Thank you for sharing that because, you know, we often talk about, you know, it's lonely at the top. So leaders are often lonely. And one of the best ways to continue to lead is to build a circle around you of people that will call you out when you need to be called out while you're supporting them (laughs) for other things. So that it becomes this mutual collaborative effort so that everybody grows. As we say, you know, the tide rises all boats. And this comment that you made as it relates to having a team of people around you that can actually support you to really, really help you learn is a powerful space to be in. So I congratulate you for that. I congratulate you for where you're at already in practice. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what type of business you're in. The information that you heard today, these nuggets on leadership that you heard today can be applied to someone who sells cookies, can be applied to someone who's in a dental practice, can be applied to someone who rents cars or sells cars for a living. It's about stepping in to possibility in the leadership roles that you are choosing to take on. So Dr. Wagner, again, congratulations for where you're at. Uh, congratulations for a great Thank season you. with the Green Bay Packers. Thank, Thank you. you for being a fantastic Life University alumnus and for taking the time to share with us today. But I will give you 30 seconds if you want to make a closing comment for our audience. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, just, again, thank you for having me. Um, I think it's really, really important that it, to kind of touch on what you said, no matter what, if your career path is chiropractic, if you are in car sales or, or whatever it is, whatever this thing is, is everything is service-based. And if you really, really emphasize how to cultivate your relationships and really care and are genuine, you can't go wrong. Um, so yeah, I think that's how I, what, what my like parting words would be, um, to be honest. So thank you again for having me. Um, I am incredibly proud to be a life alum from the, the doctor of chiropractic and master's programs. Without that, I would not be where I am today. So I am so, so, so excited to be able to have jumped on this with you and 
excited to see kind of what the, the future holds. Well, again, thank you for joining me. We're very proud of what you're doing and uh, continue the great work. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you on another episode of today's Conversations on Leadership.